Um, Sir David Ames. Uh, Madam Deputy Speaker, I'm very grateful for the opportunity that I have to share with my honourable friend, the Minister, uh, a few issues concerning the constituency represented by my honourable friend, the Member for Rochford and South End East, and myself. And let me say, Madam Deputy Speaker, at the outset, uh, my honourable friend, the Member for Rochford and South End East, has had one or two health problems recently. Uh, he's only sort of half the man that uh, he, 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 he was. But I'm delighted to tell the House that he is now well on the road to recovery, is very active in the constituency again, and uh, I'm delighted to have him by my side today. Yeah. I would also say to the House, Madam Deputy Speaker, that it should be understood that if you are a minister, you cannot take part in such debates. But I have discussed the uh, issues that I wish to raise with my honourable friend, and he has given me full permission to speak for the end of the town that he represents. Now, South End West, West because I have to be pro call first, has a population of 89,150 people. And I'm delighted to tell the House that since May 2010, there has been a 53% reduction in unemployment. Absolutely incredible. And when I think of the days when I used to represent Basildon and how high unemployment was then, just in five years to have this sort of reduction, I'm also delighted to tell the House that youth unemployment has fallen by exactly the same amount, uh, by 53%. Uh, percent. Uh, we have 3,065 businesses in South End West, and that's 310 more than we had in 2010. And very interestingly, Madam Deputy Speaker, the median gross weekly pay is £560 a week, which is £40 more than the rest of the United Kingdom. And one reason I go on about how wonderful Southend is as a seaside resort, not just being the best in the country, but in the world, is the fact that in the past year we've actually had over six million tourists visit the town. Absolutely incredible. Now, just to reflect on the political situation in South End, uh, because I'm delighted that my honourable friend, the Minister, of course, was the uh, Minister who visited South End and indeed um, oversaw the signing of the city deal. Well, in those days, we had a Conservative Control Council. Uh, last year, the Conservative lost control. Uh, they were reduced to just 19 members. And um, against them, because all the other parties, so I understand, uh, have joined forces to vote against the Conservatives. That's as I understand it. And there are nine Labour members, 13 independents. There's three in the constituency I represent and 10 in the constituency my honourable friend represents, five Liberals and five United Kingdom Independence Party members. Now, I have to say to the House, as far as the five United Kingdom Independent Party members are concerned, I, I'm somewhat confused because, as I understand, four of them have been expelled and no longer take the whip. So whether there's one, five, who knows? But whatever party banner they come up, I'm told they vote against the Conservatives. And I have to say, uh, Madam Deputy Speaker, I'm actually rather glad that we had this coalition because uh, those who know me will recall that I was dead against uh, my party going into coalition with the Liberals in 2010, just as I was dead against a fixed-term parliament. I've always thought the Liberals uh, are much closer to the Labour Party, and so I'm very pleased that in South End they found their natural home in being in, the five of them being in coalition with uh, all, all these other parties. Um, and also, Madam Deputy Speaker, to be fair to the new council, they've only been in control a number of months, so it's very difficult for anyone to judge them on, on tangible things they've achieved. I mean, I, I, I did just glance at uh, headlines in a local newspaper saying that they put the council tax up by 1.9%. 5% that they put up car parking charges and removed 55 litter bins, but I'm sure they must have done some good things as, as well, and perhaps there are reasons for that. But I now really, Madam Deputy Speaker, want to just refresh the House in terms of the things that we've managed to get from this government 
thus far an investment, but I will warn my, uh, my honourable friend, the Minister, that I am actually going to ask for further help. I do realise there's only a week to go, but um, frankly, a, a day in politics is a long time, so I'm quite optimistic that my honourable friend will be standing at the dispatch box saying yes, yes, yes. Now, ahead of my honourable friend's visit to South End, he said, South End has the potential to be a driving force for growth in the South East. It is a great place for business to locate, expand or start up. To help achieve that potential, local business and civic leaders told us they wanted to give much better support to small and medium-sized businesses. I'm delighted to be able to say yes to that proposal, which is a big boost for the economy of South End. And my honourable friend and I were there at the signing of the deal. That was in March 2014. And as a result of that deal, uh, the town has benefited in two tranches of funding. Uh, first of all, by virtue of the City deal, South End was able to bid into a £32 million pot of regional growth fund money being held by Lancaster University. And this was to design and deliver a range of business support programmes which met local needs and develop a growth hub which is the Department for Business Innovation and Skills desired conduit for providing business support delivery. <coughs> very, very much welcome. The Council were awarded a considerable amount of money, £1.8 million, from this fund to deliver business support and a growth hub. Now, since that time, I'm delighted to tell the House work has been underway and three business support programmes are being delivered Grants, innovation vouchers and workshops events are being delivered. The team, funded by the RGF uh, and employed to undertake the business engagement in relation to the programme, has delivered the grants programme. These are available to small and medium-sized enterprises and offer 30% of total project costs, provided that the project is creating or safeguarding jobs. The 70% investment in the project must come from the private sector. Now, I'm delighted to tell the House that to date the Council Grant Panel has awarded 79 grants, totalling £1,132,846 absolutely magnificent, a vital contribution to the town's economy. And as a result of that, 295 jobs have been created, and that's above the target of 192. Brilliant. Uh, and we've been safeguarding 330 jobs um, ag against what was a lower target. Secondly, uh, a funding allocation of £651,000 was for Capital Works to convert the top two floors of the old Central Library building into a business incubation centre. Now, fortunately, Madam Deputy Speaker, I understand that this centre has just opened this week, or I saw a splash in the local papers. So, uh, again, the seeds that my honourable friend in the nicest sense sowed uh, a couple of years ago have now grown and prospered. Um, so the, the building is now an incubation centre and it matches the funding that the council had invested in converting the lower floors into the new home for the Beecroft Art Gallery, which I've been to see and is absolutely magnificent. This was on the basis that Southend enjoys an entrepreneurial culture, but also sees a lot of churn with high business start-up rates, but also high closure rates. It was therefore identified that investment in affordable accommodation and business support would assist with sustainable business growth. And my honourable friend and I have many constituents who, who will benefit from this opportunity. Southend received £800,000 for the continuation and rollout of the Growth Hub across the South Essex Local Enterprise Partnership. Growth deals are a new way of running the economy, as for the first time ever, Housing, infrastructure and other funding is being brought together in a single pot and put directly into the hands of local authorities and businesses to spend the way they know best. So thanks to the eight million grant as part of the growth deal, improvements are being made on the A127, a road which my honourable friend and I use all the time. And this is going to create a better access and egress to and from South End, which will also support uh, the airport and the airport business park town centre 
and east of the town's businesses. The airport business park, I'm delighted to tell the House, has also received £3.2 million funding for developments within the JAAP area, and I know the Secretary of State for Transport recently visited the centre, and indeed Lord Heseltine was there at the start of the week speaking about uh, opportunities for investors there. Southend has also benefited from the £6.7 million funding for non-transport investment to bring forward jobs and homes in Victoria Avenue, which is greatly neglected and certainly needs to be restored. A further million pound was allocated to Southend as part of the local sustainable transport fund investment. And I'm delighted to tell the House that the Kent Elms Junction and the Bell Junction also both require major upgrades to overcome two critical bottlenecks junctions which are creating major difficulties for business into and out of the town. And to help us with these projects, the council is going to be given £4.28 million for each junction. Considerable investment. And to assist with infrastructure and essential maintenance work, £7 million of grant and for general improvements and maintenance around the town, the council received again as part of the growth deal. So in total, Madam Deputy Speaker, the council will have received some £34.5 million from the government, the coalition government, for these inf infrastructure improvements. Pinch point funding is worth £170 million, and this was announced in the 2012 autumn statement, and it aims to remove bottlenecks on the local highway uh, network, which are impeding growth. This fund reflects the government's commitment to supporting economic growth by tackling barriers on the local highway network that may be restricting the movements of goods and people. In Southend, improvements to the A127 required improvements to the Tesco roundabout, which is near to completion by the end of uh, the month, for which the Council received a grant of £3.3 million from the Department for Transport's local pinch point uh, fund. And I will pay tribute to my honourable friend because I know he lobbied hard to get a sizeable amount of that money. £9 million of investment has been given to refurbish South End Police Station. Now, uh, if I tell my honourable friend the Minister, I was there two days ago with our honourable friend, uh, the member for Hemel Hempstead, the Policing Minister. And it's just wonderful the way that this hard 60s building is going to be transformed. They're going to be moving out of the old building into uh, Westcliff Police Station, I think for about 18 months, and uh, they're going to be given uh, a wonderful accommodation with all the new technology to help them in ensuring that South End residents are kept safe. And there are going to be uh, new custody suites with uh, 30 uh, cells provided there. And the Forum, which is an absolute <coughs> iconic building, which I think in future uh, will just be a, a centre point like Trafalgar Square and Big Ben when the new year starts. And I think later in the year, a member of the Royal Family will formally open it. £27 million enterprise delivered jointly by South End on Sea Borough Council, the University of Essex and South Essex College. A magnificent facility. And the Priory, a wonderful jewel in the crown of the uh, constituents I represent. There's been investment by the Conservative administration in the Priory Park and Museum, which told the story of its former residents dating back to monks in the 13th century. A wonderful facility. So I end, Madam Deputy Speaker, with the begging bowl for what my honourable friend, the Minister, might consider he can help us with more. The pier, the most famous pier in the world, the longest pier in the world. However, it does require major investment to strengthen the main structure to be able to meet modern standards of engineering, not to mention the fact that we've had a fire there on three occasions. It needs to be designed to take the weight of buildings to expand the offer for people to visit. It would then become a major tourist opportunity. Now, the Council did invest in improving the supporting structure on one section, and that allowed the new Royal Pavilion to be brought down the River Thames and placed on the end of the pier. And it's a wonderful facility, and there are weddings there, conferences there, and all the rest of it. But I have to tell uh, my honourable friend, the Minister, that we do need more money, and I'm told that the uh, amount is something like two to three million pounds. The council has arrested the cliff slippage 
without government funding where the bandstand stood and made it fit for the commencement of a new purpose-built museum and art gallery which is needed within the town so that we can securely uh, house the Saxon Prince Vine from Prittlewell, the South End. Archaeologists excavated the site in 2003. I know in the news it's all about King Richard, but we had findings in 2003, and we discovered an undisturbed 7th century chamber grave beneath the mound. They, it was described as the most spectacular discovery of its kind during the past 60 years. About 110 objects were lifted by conservators, at the moment, these artefacts have to be housed in the London Museum and cannot be uh, viewed in our own town of South End. Again, for that amount of money for the museum, we need 15 to 20 million pounds. Further work is needed to arrest the cliff slippage. I hope that we could get it from the European Union. For that, we need 40 million pounds. Now, South End is absolutely crying out for a marina. Years and years ago, under the late great leadership, of uh, Norman Clark, one of the finest council leaders ever. We miss that opportunity by just one vote. We've had wonderful leadership of the town under <coughs> former councillor Nigel Holcroft and the present leader of the Conservatives, John Lamb. They very much want a, a, a marina. Southend is the gateway to London from the continent, but visiting Yachtman cannot stop because we lack marina facilities, which with the right investment will greatly enhance attractors attraction to visitors. This would also help London yachtsmen to shelter and have a departure port on their way to the continent. It could also be a port of call for visiting boats. This type of faci facility would also enhance a business opportunity within the yachting fraternity by creating many varied businesses. Again, I say to my honourable friend, we need about £40 million for that. Funding is needed for improvements on the A13. Uh, and for that we need about £3 million. We need to improve the flood defence between Chalkwell and Lee, not to mention the area that my honourable friend represents. With the sea level rising, this would protect the wonderful C2C railway. At the same time, the cycle way could be completed all the way from Chalkwell to Shoebriness in order to build on the Olympic legacy. Again, we need £7 million for that. We need the Lee Creek dredge to help my local fishermen, and we need £300,000 for that. And funding is required to complete phase two of the city beach development <coughs> and that will cost about two to three million pounds. So, Madam Deputy Speaker, my honourable friend and I are desperately pl pleased with the support we've had thus far from uh, the uh, government uh, and to see the Victorian seaside re resort gradually to be restored. It's absolutely magnificent. And that's why we are the alternative city of culture in 2017. We're doing extremely well. However, more needs to be done to ensure that South End reaches its full potential and becomes one of the top tourist destinations in the world. Further investment in South End will get even more people into jobs, encourage the creation of even more new businesses, attract even more tourists and help appeal to private investors and developers. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Minister. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Madam Deputy Speaker. And can I congratulate uh, my honourable friend for securing uh, this debate uh, and to say how fantastic it is to see uh, our friend and, uh, and colleague, the member for Rochford uh, and South End uh, East, uh, restored to health and back with us uh, today. Uh, both of my uh, honourable friends are real champions uh, for uh, that wonderful town of, uh, of South End, and the, uh, the, my honourable friend was, uh, I think, uh, unduly modest uh, in not uh, recognising his own and our honourable friend's uh, role in securing these investments. Because I know as the minister uh, responsible for the, uh, for the city deal uh, and the growth deal that the, the advocacy uh, for Southend from uh, both uh, my honourable friends was absolutely essential to getting the uh, investment uh, in and getting the deals uh, signed. So it is a, uh, the, the success that Southend uh, is uh, enjoying uh, is uh, reflective of his uh, efforts and our honourable friend's uh, efforts uh, over the years. Um, it is, my, my honourable friend uh, referred to some of the uh, remarkable statistics uh, in uh, South End. A 53% uh, cut in unemployment is remarkable uh, by any standards. But I think it, uh, if I may say so, uh, it's not a, a statistic that surprises uh, us because. Uh, I've long known, and I think um, many people in this house uh, have known, that uh, the entrepreneurial spirit uh, of Southend uh, is something that is very special. Uh, and when economic opportunities uh, are available, 
uh, you can rely on the people of South End uh, to avail themselves of those uh, opportunities uh, with alacrity. Uh, and that is one of the reasons that we were so keen to, uh, to forge uh, this city deal, to make sure that there was uh, support for small businesses that we knew uh, were going to be created uh, and would create jobs in the numbers uh, that they are at the, at the moment. Uh, so there is, as my honourable friend um, attested to, a, uh, many encouraging signs of real confidence uh, in South End uh, at the, the moment. Uh, and uh, the, uh, the investments and uh, innovations that he listed are all uh, contributing to that, that resurgence. Let me say something about the, uh, the city deal uh, process. Uh, it was uh, in part as a result of the, uh, the representations of um, the two honourable gentlemen uh, that South End was offered uh, a city deal, because the, the first wave uh, of city deals uh, were offered to the eight biggest cities outside London by population, uh, and they were uh, finalised in September 2012. Um, that was a programme that was acknowledged to be a success, and so there was some demand to, to extend the programme uh, to other parts of the, uh, of the country. Uh, and so in October 2012, we did precisely that uh, and invited uh, 20 cities uh, and their wider areas to negotiate for the second wave uh, of city deals. Uh, now, uh, 14 of those cities were based on the size of their population uh, as the first wave uh, had been. Uh, but we wanted to recognise uh, the, uh, the backing that is uh, appropriate and due to cities who may not be as big as the, the large industrial cities, uh, but nevertheless, uh, they are cities that are growing strongly. And of course, a growing city uh, has its own uh, demands uh, and needs for uh, investment. So South End uh, was uh, one of those six. Um, and population growth, of course, uh, is usually an indicator that a place has something going for it if uh, more people want to, uh, to live in a place uh, than in the past. Um, now, the City Deal uh, programme is uh, about transferring uh, resources that were previously tied up in Whitehall uh, to put them in the hands of local people uh, and to reflect their local priorities. That is the, the proposition uh, of City Deals. Uh, and I was delighted, as my honourable friend mentioned, to, uh, to sign in Southend the, uh, the city deal. I still have my copy uh, here with, uh, uh, with the signatures uh, in, the, uh, in the deal that we signed there uh, in, uh, it was Nigel Holcroft at the time, um, and Peter Jones, the, the chair of the Local Enterprise uh, Partnership. It was a, uh, it was a, uh, a very promising day, uh, and I'm thrilled that uh, during the uh, the time that has passed since we signed uh, that deal, uh, what was promised uh, has turned into a reality, exactly as my honourable friend uh, has said. Uh, support for the growing number of uh, businesses, mainly small and medium-sized businesses, uh, in South End and indeed across South Essex. Uh, it is uh, appropriate that when a business is, is founded uh, and is growing, that it should benefit from help and advice from people who've been there before uh, and can, uh, can share some of that uh, experience. Uh, important also that there should be incubator space, premises, uh, in which growing businesses uh, can uh, locate. Uh, so these were the elements uh, of, the, uh, of the, the city deal, and as my honourable friend said, the, the South End uh, Growth Hub uh, is now being used as the model uh, for uh, business support right across the, uh, the South East and beyond, uh, it is seen uh, as correctly uh, very successful. Uh, the city deal in South End, as elsewhere, I think has uh, uncorked, if I might put it this way, a, a new spirit uh, of uh, municipal purpose and commitment. The idea that everyone locally uh, should join in uh, attempts to revive uh, the local economy uh, is absolutely as things uh, should be. Uh, and my honourable friend made mention of the, uh, the scheme to transform some of the, the rather tired old buildings along uh, Victoria Avenue, quite close to the centre of uh, South End. Many of them no longer fit for purpose, uh, and investment there uh, can provide uh, opportunities and locations uh, for, uh, for businesses uh, in the future. Uh, and uh, like my honourable friend, I was delighted to read in the, uh, in the Echo uh, just in recent days uh, that the, uh, 
the, the transforming uh, effect uh, of this deal uh, is uh, remodelling those buildings to uh, satisfy housing demand as well as uh, premises uh, for, uh, for businesses. Uh, so uh, I think it is already clear that even in these early days that the city deal process uh, is proving good for, for Southend. Uh, it is having uh, a major effect empowering uh, local businesses uh, and civic leaders uh, to, and backing their aspirations to create more jobs uh, in uh, that very important town. And I uh, pay tribute to my honourable friend uh, and his colleague uh, for their advocacy for that. Um, but we've gone further uh, than that. Uh, as my honourable friends uh, know, uh, we've built on the city deal uh, experience and embarked on uh, an even greater enterprise uh, through agreeing with all 39 of England's local enterprise partnerships uh, growth deals uh, that transfer uh, even more money and powers from central government uh, to local areas. Uh, the South East Local Enterprise Partnership covers a large area and so naturally has one of the largest uh, allocations uh, of local growth funding. Uh, so far, nearly half a billion pounds has been devolved uh, to the South East Local Enterprise uh, Partnership. Uh, and indeed, um, the, the growth deal is being signed today, possibly even as we speak in Purfleet, uh, with the, uh, the chairman of the, the Local Enterprise uh, Partnership, because the, the funding in the growth deals uh, comes into effect uh, from April, uh, in other words, uh, just, a, uh, just a few days' uh, time. Uh, in July 2014, uh, making the first set of announcements uh, on growth deals, we announced a package uh, comprised uh, of some significant uh, investment in transport uh, infrastructure, uh, because we, uh, we know, and uh, both my honourable friends have been uh, advocates uh, of this, uh, that the, the connections around South Essex, uh, and in South End in particular, uh, are particularly important. If people uh, are going to have uh, jobs as never before, uh, if businesses are going to be created in larger numbers, then people need to be able to get to work and they need to be able to get around uh, the area. Uh, and of course, South End is a critical anchor at the eastern end of the Thames Gateway. Uh, so the growth deal commitments include uh, upgrades to both the A127 uh, and over the longer term, uh, the A13. Uh, specifically uh, in South End, the, uh, the uh, the growth deal will extend the South End and Rochford growth hub um, and will further invest uh, in the Victoria Avenue uh, gateway. Uh, there is uh, £3.2 million pounds, uh, committed to develop the business park adjacent to the airport. Uh, and we do recognise the very positive effects that regional airports can have uh, on uh, economic growth. And London South End Airport itself has certainly been a success with over a million passengers a year and scooping industry awards uh, for growth. But I want to emphasise that we have allocated only about two-thirds uh, of the £12 billion pounds, uh, of funding uh, that is available uh, under the, uh, the Local Growth Fund. Uh, so when it comes to the, uh, the requests that I, uh, I was confident that my honourable friend would, uh, would come to uh, in his uh, speech, whether for the peer uh, or for the other uh, transport uh, improvements that he, uh, that he mentions, uh, we have a, an ideal vehicle for that through the growth deals. Uh, they, uh, the negotiations for the next uh, phase of growth deals will, uh, will take place uh, shortly after the uh, general election, uh, if we, uh, as I hope, will be returned to continue this very important uh, programme. Uh, and so that offers the opportunity uh, for uh, many, if not all, of the proposals that my honourable friends uh, mentioned to, to make the most vigorous case uh, in the negotiation, confident that that money is available, that was uh, in Whitehall, is available uh, to be invested uh, in South End uh, and uh, in uh, Essex uh, more generally. So I uh, hope that with the uh, the good, good sense of the uh, electorate in both of the South End uh, constituents, uh, both of my uh, honourable friends will be returned uh, in style to, to this House to continue their magnificent uh, advocacy for uh, their great town uh, and that we can uh, proceed with uh, this uh, amazing momentum that has now uh, established itself uh, in Southend, uh, confident that the, uh, there is much more uh, to come.
Uh, the future for South End uh, is bright. My honourable friend uh, will know, I think it was uh, Sir John Betjeman, who famously said uh, of, the, of the pier, uh, South End is the pier, the pier is South End. Uh, well, there's a lot more to South End uh, than, uh, than the pier now, marvellous though uh, the pier uh, is, uh, and uh, I want to see it go from strength to strength. So I uh, thank my honourable friend for his uh, warm uh, words. I'm delighted that uh, he's been able to, uh, to bring uh, our, his neighbour and our friend uh, uh, with him uh, into this very important uh, debate today. Uh, between them, they have made a signal contribution to the prosperity uh, of South End during this Parliament, uh, and I hope very much they will have the chance to do so in the next Parliament. Yeah, yeah, yeah.